the podcast that finishes your workday in a very Red Raider way. This is the Tech Talk Podcast from Double T 97.3. Everybody love everybody except for people who call soda pop. Oh, They're excluded. Shot fired. They're excluded from the ELE triangle. It's Tech Talk on Double T 97.3 and Double T 973.com alongside Mike Gustafson and Clint Scott. I'm Aaron Dickens. We're joining you today until 6.30. Hope you're having a great Friday. We appreciate you spending part of it with us. We'll be with you until 6.30. Which caught up and ready for some Texas Rangers baseball as they begin a four-game series with the Minnesota Twins there in the Twin Cities. First pitch tonight, 7.05 p.m. Central Time. Uh, our coverage will start for you at 6.30 on 100.7 The Score. Gus, uh, we are enjoying a, a buffet of uh, fruit-flavored sodas. Yeah. Uh, on the program today, thanks to you. You sure. these well, in. We my turn. Them. Absolutely. Yeah, it was my turn. Glad yeah, to do. We've got a little grape, orange, and red. Whatever that strawberry, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's some fantastic alternative pop, Gus. Yeah. Big fan. I don't know what the next category is. Maybe we just keep just digging digging deeper into the... What about like Mexican sodas? Uh, what are the... Uh, okay. Doritos? Some like... I mean, they come in bottles. I mean, yeah. you yeah. can get them at the store. It may be... Those, I mean, I have a limited experience with those, but I've always enjoyed them yeah. when I've had them. Like like a sweeter sugar, sure. I mean, a sugary soda, Coke, Well, pop, you can get, like, whatever. Mexican Coke, I think at the store still, Yeah, and then, like, in bottles. Isn't there, there's, like, an apple soda. And then they have there, their too. own, like, yeah, the I don't know the brand name, but yeah. You know, when it comes to booze, I don't know, we're talking sodas here, but one of, the, yeah, one of the things I'm not big on are all the... All the flavored, like flavored bourbons and stuff. Like I had some, I had some, and I've had it and it's not terrible, but it's like, it's the kind of thing like, yeah, that's got to be mixed with something or you don't want to get too much of that going. Right. It seems like that. It seems like there's a residual the next morning. Oh, like some pounding headaches and stuff like that, you know, because you went heavy with the pecan flavored bourbon or whatever. You know what I mean? That does not sound like a good experience. Just like a little yeah. too sweet, a little too much. And again, I've tasted it, and it's not bad, but it's it's like this got to be, and it's not. You know, it really to me those flavored type things need to be mixed. Here, here's a potentially dumb question. Yeah. Speaking of uh, of flavored alcohol, right? Because I was kind of going through my head of like the different flavored alcohols that I've actually enjoyed. Right, they didn't just taste like you know somebody sliced an orange next to. Uh, you know, a glass of bourbon and that's orange flavored bourbon. Is there is there just regular fla- like is there a a neutral schnapps or is it all flavored? Ooh, I don't know. I'm not aware of that. I, I think uh, I assume they're all flavored. No, they may be a peach, is, whatever. But know, there's not like not what's the original schnapps? schnapps? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Got to be one of the I'm not sure why questions of the universe. I'm not I know, sure why I mean, I'm looking at the guy from Kansas. You keep looking at me, and I'm like, I've got nothing. <laughs> You're Mr. World Traveler, dude. Yeah, <laughs> You're and I've enjoyed... asking us. You've enjoyed schnapps on, on the European continent, yeah. right? Yeah, but I, I guess there's not just like a normal... Maybe one of our esteemed uh, listeners can fill us in there. Uh... This on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Uh, looks like AD robbed the new gas station. <laughs> no, this, this was Gus's that turn. Me. Yeah. yeah, they're just assembled in front of me. So that yeah, uh, well, it's kind of closer to the Clinton, door. Might, yeah, make it a little bit easier for Clint. Uh, this on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Uh, AD, I just dropped two hundred dollars to win six K, wagering that Tech will win the Big Twelve in football this year. You tell me why I'm right, and Gus could tell me why I'm wrong. Start debating. <laughs> why we won't win the Big 12? Um, probably O-line, linebacker, uncertainty at those two spots, and probably just not the not the overall roster depth, I assume, to, uh, to be great yet. It'd be really, I don't want to say unprecedented, but that'd be quite a – that'd be – a, a pretty nice turnaround. I don't say turnaround. Seven and six last year with a bowl win, but that would be a big leap for a first-year coach. 
I don't know that I, I don't think McGuire's inheriting a dumpster fire, but I don't think he's inheriting a just a rich, deep roster yet. Um, so here is for the sake of this discussion, uh, my argument for why Tech would win the Big Twelve. Okay. Right, as I think it as prompted by the texture, and I think it has to do with what else is in the league. Is that what you're going to say? I think that you have reason to feel. Um, you know, pretty confident about your quarterback position. Uh, mm-hmm. w- whether Tyler Shuck is named the starter, you know, this time next week, or if it's Donovan Smith, whatever, um, I-, I feel reasonably confident that if that position does not produce right away, um, you you have options. You know, mm-hmm. if you need to make a change or if there's an injury, and I don't know that there are many other. Uh, teams in this league with that same level of luxury at that most important position. You do have question marks on the offensive line, uh, but I think you have some talent there. They just haven't played together all that much. Right. Uh, they haven't, um, in some cases, played a lot of Power 5 football, um, and in some cases they haven't played much at all. Uh, but I think the raw ability is there for you to be pretty solid. Maybe not as deep as you would like, so you need to be really lucky with injuries. Um, and I think that goes really across the board. Uh, you've got two really good running backs, uh, and you have some mm-hmm. experience in your defensive secondary. Mm-hmm. And if you know T- Tim DeRuiter can produce a defense like he's been able to in the past at different places, then if Zach Kitley can kind of um, keep the same level of success that he had at HBU in Western Kentucky, then I think that you will be a pretty dangerous outfit. Uh, this season and you get most of your tough games at home you get oklahoma at home you get baylor at home those are two top 10 teams um you do play oklahoma state and stillwater that's not going to be easy uh texas at home although i don't think that they'll be very good this year so i think it's a somewhat somewhat favorable slightly maybe uh home schedule uh your quarterback position i think is going to be a plus for you I think you have, you know, some some raw talent ability up front on offense. They just need to gel quickly. So that would be my my pro. I think you just lost two hundred bucks. If I'm, you know, being very real, but I hope that you win. That'd be awesome. It would be fantastic. Yeah, got some quarterback starting quarterbacks getting announced around the country. Nebraska named Casey Thompson. They're starting quarterback. Well, of course, that's former the former Longhorn and. Speaking of the Longhorns. Down in Austin, a very peculiar situation, yeah. Gus. Not that Quinn Ewers was announced as a starter, but how he was announced as a starter. Well, so last night, um, you know, orangebloods.com, which is one of the largest kind of internet team sites out there that exists, uh, they cover Texas. They're part of the Rivals Network. And they reported, based on some fairly deep sourcing, that, hey, you know, kind of prepare yourself for Hudson Card being named the starter here. He's he's looked better in practice. You know, Ewers has all the physical tools, but according to the sources that we've spoken to, and I'm paraphrasing here, you know, Ewers hasn't quite gotten there in terms of the mental aspect of that position, that playbook, etc. And then, you know, this morning, the SID at Texas pops into a media availability. Like mid A completely unrelated right. media availability. Right. Not about quarterbacks at all. And says, oh, by the way, Sark wanted me to let you know, Quinn Ewers is, is QB1. Very odd. More yeah. Tech Talk next. It's every Red Raiders favorite podcast. This is the Tech Talk podcast from Double T 97.3. Hey, it's the juice on double t ninety seven three double t ninety seven three dot com and the double t ninety seven three mobile app presented by happy state bank with mike gustafson and clint scott and i'm aaron dickens time for some headlines the texas rangers baseball team will be back in action tonight beginning a weekend series with the minnesota Twins. First pitch of this evening from Target Field is at 7 10 p.m. Central Time. Our pregame coverage will begin for you at 6 30 on Double T 97 3. Rangers fresh off of a 10 to 3 demolition of the Oakland A's. Looking to carry that momentum over into this weekend series. Uh, 
Rangers will stay on the road after this series. They'll play a couple of games in Colorado before returning home uh, on Friday. Astros in action as well tonight. They'll take on the Atlanta Braves, the defending world champions in Atlanta. First pitch, 6.20 p.m. Astros uh, just split a series in Chicago against the White Sox, winning yesterday 21-5. to Lance McCullers versus Kyle Wright, a pretty good pitching matchup. That's a probably important an important one for the Astros to know what they're getting from Lance McCullers. Texas Longhorns have named Quinn Ewers, the uh, former heralded recruit who began his collegiate career at Ohio State. Um, they have named him as their starting quarterback. The South Lake Texas native uh, had been competing for the job with Hudson Card. Card opened up last season as the starter, uh, but mostly played behind Casey Thompson. Texas will open up the season against Louisiana Monroe on September 3rd before hosting preseason number one Alabama, gulp, on September the 10th. Nebraska, speaking of uh, starting quarterbacks and Casey Thompson, Nebraska has named Thompson, who transferred from Texas, as its starting quarterback for next week's season opener against Northwestern in Ireland. How about that? In Dublin. Dublin. You, you too can join the program. We'd love to hear your thoughts and your comments on the Yates Flooring Center chat line at DoubleT973.com or through the DoubleT973 mobile app presented by Happy State Bank. Now we get this in the chat line. Texas will never compete in the SEC with boosters making coaching decisions. Yes, I, I am very curious about the dynamic here because... By most accounts, by most you know sourced accounts, by most uh, reported accounts, neither Quinn Ewers or Hudson Card had just been doing awesome in uh, camp leading up to this point. There was detailed reporting uh, from multiple sources from OrangeBloods.com yesterday, yesterday evening, as a matter of fact, saying, "Hey, like the way it looks right now, probably going to be Card starting. Just Ewers hasn't." Hasn't quite been there. It hasn't quite picked up all the mental things that is required from this position in this offense. And then lo and behold, less than 12 hours later, in a very weird and, un, I mean, just unusual uh, manner, Texas announced that Ewers is the starting quarterback. I mean, like, we, we spent some time talking about this. As a matter of fact, I think it was on Wednesday, Gus, mm -hmm. how, you know, this is this is content Right, this is news that these programs own, right? And being able to announce it on their terms, yeah. on their websites, their platforms, um, you know, deliver their message the way that they want it to be delivered, that's priceless to them. And so I would be like, there's no way that Texas Tech announces its starting quarterback by sending Matt Dowdy into a room with reporters who are interviewing other players. Talking says, to the linebacker. Hey, guys, oh, yeah. by the way. It's going to be so and so, you know, like there's just no way that happens. Well, Brian Davis said the reaction was, of course, he was one of the reporters right. in the room. He said it was stunned silence. Everybody's like, <laughs> I don't, are we supposed to go just resume interviewing the linebacker here in front of us? Man, I mean, because what is more likely here? Like, let's let's examine this. I realize that you know Jeff Ketchum or OrangeBloods.com probably not the most popular person inside the the texas tech you know red raider fan bubble I totally get that texas no in the texas tech like, oh, oh yeah, yeah i'm, sorry, I'm sorry. guessing there aren't yeah. like a lot of folks out there who are tech fans that go i, mean, I just love jeff ketchum got I mean, it got I, it got it i'm sorry um yeah. but he's been around a long time his his website is is well established it's gigantic very successful what do you think is more likely someone you know that, like jeff ketchum and his staff get these detailed sourced reports from people that are close slash inside the program, right? And, like, how do we think that was made up? Like, there's no way, right? Mm -hmm. Like, they were they were told those things by people that should know. Were they intentionally fed bad information? Was this some kind of, like, hey, let's root out the mole type thing? Mm -hmm. Was this, a, like, a trial balloon, right? Was this a deal where... That's really how it's been. It's really been Hudson Card, 
being better than yours, but the intense reaction from the fans and maybe the big money boosters led to a a reversal, right? Like there, there's nothing about this that that seems like right, you know, that seems like this is the proper course of action. We've got, yeah, that it's bizarre. All of it's bizarre, and even at its even at its I'm gonna say blandest, but even at its most Belichickian. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Um, you think Belichick ever uh, dabbles in some grape soda? I don't know. He might when he's out on the Cape in the summer. You know, seems like something that he might because he's like a big bike rider. Maybe he would give that a go. Um. And maybe, maybe in a sort of wistful way, like we are, like, oh man, this reminds me of my childhood. You know, really can't beat the smell. Yeah, I know, big the, smell. The smell is just awesome. Big, big fragrance. I was just about to say, I was kind of the excited bouquet. to pour in a, a little, you know, back half of the rest of that bottle, till I watch you mustache all over it there. <laughs> well, that's how you like. That's how like you know, wine tasting. You put your nose like, yeah, but, it's like oh, you're trying to sweep dust off that sucker. <laughs> Just trying to get the. Do the I'm getting <laughs> notes of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> do the do the that thing. And then when you're done, do you spit it into the I was, bucket? I was like, uh, <laughs> it's like an ice cube right down. Like eat some more, eat some more crackers. <laughs> Gargle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, jeez. This but, is a red. <laughs> I, dro- I Yeah, exactly. I I drop Bella Jackie in, and you respond by. <laughs> I think at its most Belichickian level. Guess is our it's uh, a, fruit soda <laughs> sommelier. Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, 2022 Grape Crush. A fine <laughs> year, sir. Yeah. Wait, I'm about to try this. I'm about to try this orange over here. But wouldn't the most basic, just simple approach to this be at the next media availability on Tuesday, he just makes the announcement? At it, at its least promoted. And I, I sort of threw that up. I guess the least promoted thing might be Coach McGuire tomorrow at 1.30 post-scrimmage at his media availability says, hey, I think we've seen all we need to see. Fill in the blank. You know, X is our quarterback. We came in today with him in mind, and he played great today, and here we are. Right. But just like like what you what you're describing there is just no preparation. Just, hey, aren't they meeting with the media down there? Say, hey, run down there and tell them that – we're, high, yeah. we're going to start yours. Like what? Kind of the biggest story of the deal, right? I mean, it's sort of like here at Tech. It's important. It's important that we've got a that we've got an Outland candidate that uh, hasn't practiced yet, right? Am I right about that? Yeah, Outland. I was make sure I got my trophy. My our Outland trophy watch list guy mm-hmm. hasn't practiced yet. I thought that's widely known, right? Um, we're, nobody's talking about him. <laughs> you know, we all know that's important, but that's not what gets gets right. That's not what's getting talked about There's at not the wine be a big press at the, release at the water cooler. No, uh-uh. they're not going to come out with a, a custom graphic <laughs> for on Cole, Twitter. Yeah, for for uh, Cole Spencer. Cole Spencer returns to practice, <laughs> yeah. which it's a big deal, right? Yeah, but, and I would. Yeah, and and as but it's a, not quarterback news. No. And and I would think it's it was that way at, at Texas, and so just to just to drop the Quinn Ewers deal again, and, and Belichick may throw it into a press availability, and that's it with no emotion or anything else. And you go, okay, we're done here. Mm-hmm. You know, dodge a couple of questions and move on, but not thrown in by the guy who sticks his head in the door and just announces it, right? Uh, this in the Yates Flooring Center chat line. This big talk, eighty Texas is pretty much the same team that put up seventy on Texas Tech last year. Uh, a, no, it's not. Uh, and B, still lost to Kansas. Sorry. Uh, we'll have Rangers baseball coverage coming up for you at six thirty here on Double T ninety seven three. This is Tech Talk. <laughs> podcast put together with red raider fans in mind this is the tech talk podcast from double t 97.3 hi how are you good afternoon it's tech talk on double t 97.3 and double t 97.3.com with mike gustafson and clint scott i'm aaron dickens 
for joining you today until 6.30. We'd love to hear your thoughts and your comments on the EH Flooring Center chat line at DoubleT973.com or through the Double T 97.3 mobile app presented by Happy State Bank. Um, we'll have Rangers baseball co- coverage for you here on uh, Double T 97.3 beginning at 6.30, first pitch, 7, 10 p.m., Rangers versus the Twins. Uh, this in the EH Flooring Center chat line. Uh, also, Texas finished with a losing record, and I do believe that Tech went to a bowl game uh, I could not care less if Texas put up 70 on us. They should have last year, and they also shouldn't have lost seven games, including one to Kansas. So if it's basically the same Texas team, I guess they're going 5-7 and seven again. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. Uh, they're going to get drilled on September 10th, that's for sure. Um, some interesting goings-on in the Big Ten. As uh, Let's see. I want to pull this up so I can quote exactly here. Kevin Warren conducted an interview with Brian Gumble um, on HBO Real Sports. Yep. And, and most of those are recorded pieces, mm-hmm. but I assume that one was fairly, fairly recent. Fairly recent. Yeah. Like very recent, relatively speaking, because most of those are prepared pieces that are put together over weeks. So listen to this through the prism of what we discussed yesterday with Pat Forty and and Brett McMurphy saying, hey, the Big Ten is not done expanding. They were citing sources in the Big Ten. Um, Bright Gumbel to Kevin Warren, commissioner of the Big Ten. Uh, right now we're having a major realignment in college sports. That's Gumbel's kind of prompt, not really a question. And then here's Warren. And I think during that period there's going to be a lot of disruption, and that's okay. We need to embrace it if we want to make sure that we continually build college athletics in a position where it's here 100 and 200 years from now. Here's Gumble with a bit of a follow-up. You're at 16 teams now, the Big Ten. Could you foresee 20? Here's Warren's response. I could. Yeah, I could see perpetual and future growth. It's kind of, um, it's a bit more, it's a step ahead of anonymous sources saying, hey, we're not done expanding. Pretty direct. You would, and the, and then the, uh, you know, the the big one out there is obviously Notre Dame, and I wonder if, I mean, obviously Notre Dame is the big one, and they they probably always got a seat there for them. But there's also a point at which the Big Ten moves on. Hey, we we just announced a media rights deal that might be putting an extra twenty million in our pockets that you aren't getting for the first time ever. The big 10 member schools are going to be getting more money out of their media deal than Notre Dame perhaps. Um, but Notre Dame's got that independence and that seat at the table and, and maybe even more importantly, the, the direct path into the college football playoff, right? Especially if that thing opens up to 12 or 16 teams, you know, Notre Dame getting in, is going to be a fairly simple path. They're not going to have to win championships to do that. Right. Well, they really don't. They can schedule soft and get in. Right? Uh, I mean, I don't know about soft, and I don't know really how much. They might not have just a whole lot of, of wiggle room with their schedule because a, a good chunk of that is dictated by the ACC, the ACC yeah. through their kind of half-membership. Alliance thing. Right? Yeah. And then you throw in you know, annual games against like the USC's and et cetera. I just don't know how much, how much space they have to really either go hard or soft, you know, insert jokes here. You know, I just, yeah, that, that might be like three games, four games. I wonder why I didn't going back a few years. I wonder why Notre Dame gave up the Notre Dame Michigan game. Which had been around since pfft, the there were no helmets, probably. Well, I, certainly, um, to to keep USC is it as simple as just Los Angeles market that kind of stuff? But that that was, I mean, that Notre Dame Michigan thing had um, you know regional so, sort of that you know everyone in half of Chicago probably took a side in that deal. 
and and Detroit, maybe now yeah. with the uh, the relationship between NBC and the Big Ten, maybe they're encouraged to restart that game on a more regular basis. And Michigan's gone. Okay, we get to play a Big Whoopee. Ten schedule and them. Yeah. And them. Goodness. Yeah. Uh, this in the Yates Flooring Center chat line uh, from T Money eight hundred six eighty. I'm surprised. You didn't take a personal day to dress up and head over over to the convention center. What's going on at the convention center? I think I think Lubbock Comic Con. Oh, cool! I oh, believe is neat. going on. I think uh, if I remember seeing the only person that I recognized was one of the Power Rangers was going to be here. I don't know if it was the original Red Ranger or who, but I think that was the big get. I think the original Red Ranger is in some legal problems. Probably not him. Then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not really a big dress up, like as as I'll own being a nerd or you know whatever. So you would attend, but you wouldn't do it in costume. Uh, if you I've attended, a, yeah, you I've wouldn't attend in costume. Past, okay, right, it was okay here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, cool. But I'm not, I'm not a big dress up guy. Yeah, that that that's what I'm getting at. Really, like, under any circumstances. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not dress up to go to a comic con. I'm not dress up to go out to eat. I'm not a dress up to go to. I mean, just. Shorts and flip flops, and there you go. Did you get your winter flip flops yet? I, I have not. What would those even be? Would those be like fur lined flip flops? I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I think it would be like some sort of pelt, but in the shape still of the flip flop. Would there be a sole, or would it just be soft on bottom? I mean, like probably have to have some sort of stability, right? Yeah, maybe like uh, moccasin level stability see my my issue with any kind of warm flip-flop is that it would probably make you your feet sweat when you're inside and then your feet would just smell but just on the specific lines the is the flop the tarp the top of it would that how you would describe the lines that no i feel like the, like flop the flop is the, the sound on the bottom the flop is the sound that they make when you walk right it's a it's a flip flop flip flop gus is reevaluating his life choices right now i think what kind of yield does a flip flop have? A noisy yield. It's, it it yields a moderate level of noise. This in the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Uh, Red Ranger weed strain. Uh, this in the chat line. Flop is the soul. Flip is the toe thing. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, our resident Texas fan says this in the chat line. Texas Tech got lapped by Baylor. You won't catch up. I mean. Baylor's played in two Big 12 title games in the last three years. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've lapped a lot of folks, and I don't, uh, I don't foresee them um, losing ground to Texas this year. We'll see. Nope. We'll see. We'll have Rangers baseball for you on Lubbock Sports Station Double T ninety seven three tonight, beginning at six thirty. First pitch seven ten. This in the chat line from T Money eight hundred six. Uh, I'm with you on the cosplay, AD, but a chance to go to San Diego, uh, I would have to tape a nickel on my back or something like that. I don't understand. Yeah, I'm not... There's... um, That's just not my thing. I'm just not... like To me, that sounds like a lot of lines, you know? I'm not a big fan of lines or waiting. Uh, this in the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Uh, I'm just waiting for another monkey type story to drop out of Austin. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I do feel like there's more to this, you know. And I'm not. I don't think there's anything nefarious here. No, no. I just think that there's more to the story because it seems kind of disorganized. It yeah. does. Yeah, because yeah, that, that's. I think Sarkeesian, and I'm far from some expert on kind of Sarkeesian's public comments during this preseason camp, but I think he's even said. That you know they'll handle it a certain way, and this kind of flies against that. And I don't know if this is some kind of like direct result of or response to the Orange Bloods report from last night that said Hudson Card would probably be the starter. It's not just Orange Bloods either. I think even uh, an outfit called Inside Texas, which is fairly reputable, uh, also said similar things last night about Hudson Card and, and leading that quarterback race. So I don't know if it's. Uh-huh. I have a hard time believing that those reporters just got it wrong. Yeah. You and know? It, and and I would be concerned about any desire to just be tuned in enough to the media to go, hey, watch this. <laughs> like, you yeah. know, 
like a well, hey we got our gotcha moment here more tech talk next the podcast that finishes your work day in a very red raider way this is the tech talk podcast from double t 97.3 hi how are you good afternoon it's tech talk on double t 97.3 double t 97.3.com and the Double T 97.3 mobile app presented by Happy State Bank with Mike Gustafson and Clint Scott. I'm Aaron Dickens. We're joining you today until 6.30. would love to hear your thoughts and your comments on the Yates Flooring Center chat line at Double T 97.3.com. You can also access that through the Double T 97.3 mobile app presented by Happy State Bank. This on the chat line, the talk that I'm hearing is that Sar had to choose the more practical option for quarterback one and not the best option. Yeah, you know, frankly, nothing would really surprise me about that situation. Um, you know, it wouldn't be the first time that an outside influence had tried to, um, you know, interfere with coaching decisions, roster decisions. I think you're probably naive if you don't think it doesn't happen other places too. It's not just a, not just a Texas problem, although it's way more fun when it is a Texas problem. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I had even seen some speculation last night when Orange Bloods and I think other outlets in Austin too had kind of reported or passed along that, hey, Hudson Card might be in the lead here. I mean, just kind of prepare yeah. yourself for him being the starter potentially. I, I had seen speculation of they're, they're just doing this to protect Quinn Ewers from Alabama. Right? Throw Hudson Card out there against ULM. That'll be a boat race anyways. Ewers will get some run in the second half, probably. Uh, and then, hey, Hudson Card thrown to the Wolves September 10th. Longhorns get pulled apart, you know, ripped into teeny tiny bits. And then it's the Quinn Ewers show from that point on. And Ewers comes in midway through the third quarter and picks up some garbage time points. Uh, yeah, no, no pressure. pressure. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, and now it's going to be quite the opposite. It's going to be Ewers throwing for you know, five touchdowns in two weeks and or whatever. Uh, this in the Yates Flooring Center chat line. That's a weird way of saying that a company who gave you worth a million dollars want their products on the field so they can get a return. As well, somebody points out on the chat line, since, you know, NIL is not supposed to be based off of starting status or on-field performance or anything like that. Uh, technically, that is true. But at the same time, technically, you shouldn't be offering NIL money to recruits as inducements, but that's happening everywhere. As evidenced by, speak of the devil, as evidenced by um, the LSU quarterback basically retiring from the game last week mm -hmm. or this week, earlier this week, as a sixth year senior, probably playing through some injuries and beat up and just saying, hey, I'm done. And, and the reporting was, yeah, the car dealer and Raising Canes and all of them still have to pay up. This in the Yates Flooring Center chat line, do you think this helps us playing Texas early this season? I do think that... Um, I do think that you would rather play Texas early this season than you would late. Because um, I, don't, I don't know that they'll have... I think they're fairly young in some spots, which is not unlike a lot of teams in this conference. Um, I think they're especially inexperienced or kind of iffy or on a little shaky at quarterback. And so certainly you would rather play an inexperienced quarterback at Texas than a, you know, a more seasoned, experienced quarterback in November. So absolutely. I think if, if you're picking where you put these teams in your schedule, I think Texas – there at the beginning is a pretty good spot. Yep. First road game for them? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Like that part two, I would assume, with a young quarterback. And I don't know that it really matters, you know, what Tech does in those the first two big games, right, Houston and NC State. I think regardless of what happens in Raleigh or what happens against the Longhorns, you're going to have a pretty amped up crowd for that game on September 24th uh, here in Lubbock. So I don't know if, the, you know, you don't need to, like, manage the crowd there. And, I mean, heck, like, the Longhorn schedule was 
is tougher than I think people would think. I mean, obviously Alabama looms very, looms very, yeah. very large, sure. right? But I mean, ULM is typically not some kind of just gimme pushover. And then we know UTSA can play. Yeah. Now they might have lost some players from last year's team. I don't know the status of their kind of you know pipeline, uh, but that Man. program can play. All three of those games at home. Wow. Yeah. I mean, do you want that? Do you want all three non-conference games at home? Sure. I mean, I think more often than playing not. Alabama at home, I think is is functionally equivalent to playing. Yeah, that's a home and home. I understand that. Well, but, but I'm still, still like that's still a very very stern test. Oh yeah yeah. You know, like that's that that's going to be just as challenging, if not more so. You know, have have we we being Texas Tech have has Tech had three non-conference home games? It's been a while because usually. Usually one of those three is on the road, and that's sort of, you know, that ends up being the talking point every year. Yeah, it's good to get out on the road, get our game day routine, blah, 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 before conference play. But, heck, I may be. Because last year this you was played the first in, year with seven home games since oh nine. Right. Last year you played um, in Houston. Yeah, in Houston. 2021 you just played one non-conference game. Uh, 2019 yeah. you played at Arizona. Uh, 2018, you played Ole Miss in Houston. Uh, let's see, 2017, you played at Houston. 2016, played at Arizona State. 2015, you played at Arkansas. 2014, you played at UTEP. So I think 20, eh, 2013, you played at SMU. 2012, nope, you played at Texas State. Let's try this again. The last time that you had three non-conference home games. Maybe 09. It was 2010, and it's oh, but they weren't they you, weren't all that, at the that's front. That's when you were playing four non-conference games. That's true, and and, and they, they weren't, weren't all together. Correct. Yeah. yeah, you played. You hosted SMU. You played in Mexico, in Albuquerque, then Texas, and then boom, conference schedule, and then you closed out your uh, regular season. Weber State, gross, uh, November 20th, and Houston, November 27th. Really, mm -hmm. man, I have no recollection of those games. The last time that you played, um, yeah, I don't, I mean, you've pretty regularly had at least one non-conference road game, e even when you were playing just a bunch of slappies. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's what I was getting the at. Last even... time, the last time that you played all of your non-conference games at home was 05. You played Indiana State. Yeah, Florida International, Sam Houston State, and Indiana State. Boy, that was and and you know and, and this may not be fair. Well, I'll paint with a broad brush here, but that to me was the was the the Leach era non conference schedule was that right there. I mean, and again, that's painting with a broad brush, and it's not it's not completely accurate, but that just three cupcakes and and, and remember what what it, what was the takeaway from oh five. Nine and two record and a Cotton Bowl appearance, so yeah, right. nobody seemed to mind. Well, and it's it's funny too because like I think in retrospect, some of those non conference schedules, even though very clearly, I mean, you weren't really out there to to challenge yourself big time. I mean, you still played some uh, some quality teams, even if they were a group of five. Again, you weren't playing, you know, an an SEC team or USC or whatever. Like even in 08, when you played Nevada. Mm -hmm. Right, I mean, who was the quarterback for Kaepernick, that team? Yeah, yeah, Colin Kaepernick, NFL guy, and and who scored uh, touchdowns for UMass? Oh yeah, in that game. Um, oh, uh, what was his face? The dancing New York Giant, right? Yeah, uh, um, Cruz, Victor uh, Cruz, yeah, Cruz was catching yeah, yeah, passes yeah. in that game. So, well, I remember road trips to SMU, and I remember road trips to New Mexico, and that was when New Mexico was good and scrappy, and, and they beat us yeah. once. Yeah, more tech talk next. It's every Red Raiders favorite podcast. This is the Tech Talk Podcast from Double T 97.3. In Austin, Texas Longhorns have named Quinn Ewers as their starting quarterback. Um, he initially signed and began his career collegiately at Ohio State, but transferred to Texas um, several months ago. Nebraska has named Casey Thompson 
uh, to be its starting quarterback. Thompson started several games for the Longhorns last season, but transferred to Nebraska during the offseason. He actually led the Big 12 with 24 touchdown passes. Wow. And that's, to me, that's the, um, you know, there's a, I think that in the, in a lot of things, perception lags behind reality, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that if you approach, you know, a, a casual college football fan, maybe they're a Florida fan or a, you know, an Arizona State fan or something. And ask them about the Big 12. They're going to oh, tell yeah. you, hey, it's wide open, no defense, pass happy, all that stuff. Hey, you're about 10 years late with that. <laughs> it, it's evolved, right? Big and time. I mean, th- th- there were there were years where Tech's starting quarterback would have 24 passing touchdowns at, you know, after non-conference play. Mm-hmm. Right? Or pretty doggone, doggone close. And for Casey Thompson to lead the league with 24 touchdown passes is um, crazy. It's crazy, and I think it's been a minute too since you've had a four thousand yard passer. And and there was a stretch there where you had a number of teams with like forty five hundred yard passers or five thousand passing yards. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't know that it's you know I don't think it's any less fun or interesting, but certainly the, the reputation of this conference is not does not match up with what we will see on Saturdays this fall. No, I I agree, and and uh, it's a much more balanced conference than it's been. Um, you know, Casey Thompson's interesting. Obviously, his father Charles was w- w- right at the very end of the wishbone era, and he and he sort of became a face of the end of the Switzer era. Like I believe he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated in handcuffs. I think isn't that right? I don't know. Uh, I have to think about that. Regardless. You know, got in some trouble, different things, but he had, you know, was a player at OU. I think he was from Lawton. Uh, his, his son has now played at Texas and Nebraska. <laughs> like, you, yeah. what's left? OSU? I mean, that's, historically, those are their two biggest rivals, you know, th- throughout time. Now, over the last s- several years, the Nebraska OU deals fizzled away but though they're the playing day, this year yeah it was it was the game in the big eight and it was always at the very end it was michigan ohio state and in fact it fell oftentimes on a weekend that featured alabama auburn michigan ohio state nebraska ou and they were it was quite often for the big big eight championship there was the, a pretty interesting story in the athletic today uh, I'm trying to pull it up. It was the 20 most influential college football games of the 2000s. Interesting. Influential. Influential. I saw that link and didn't click on it. And I, re- I think, I remember thinking, ooh, I need to come back to that. And never did. And, you know, th- this, people will probably define influential in different ways, which is fine. But mm-hmm. the, the 20 most influential games since 2000, according to Andy Staples. And there was a Texas Tech game on this. I bet. Just one. Because you and said the 2000s, right? Since 2000. Yeah, and so there's probably it's probably a game that's, what, emblematic of the air raid? Any guesses? Not that it really helps you figure out which one it is, but it's ranked eighth on this list. So in the upper half. And it's influential. It's the 2002 Texas Tech victory over Ten- Texas. Oh, really? And okay. it's influential, according to this list, uh, not really as much because of how it affected Texas Tech later on. Right. It views it primarily through the Texas angle. And the, the, the rationale is this. Top five Texas team comes to Lubbock, right? They lose, what, 42-38. Mm-hmm. Red Raiders just can, you know, kind of scored at will. Right, yeah. scored and right at the end of the first half. That, on a big play. We all know, hey, yeah. shotgun, passing it all over the place. Longhorns, meanwhile, I formation, right? They ran the ball thirty-one times. They threw it thirty-seven. Pretty, pretty balanced. And so, Chris the, Sims, the next year, 
right? The next year, the Longhorns, a lot more shotgun, right? And they have um, Chance Mock and yeah. then Vince Young kind of yeah. waiting in the wings. And so it kind of makes the argument that that one game and other results like it helped kind of you know push the Longhorns into opening up the offense a bit more, and which led to Vince Young... 05. Going thermonuclear and eventually then sure. winning the national championship in 2005. Yeah, I can see that. You know, and I think uh, th- there's probably a game. I don't know what the, what that game would be, though. But, you know, there was a point mm, five or so, six, seven years ago where Nick Saban went to, I guess it would have been uh, Lane Kiffin. Maybe when he hired Lane Kiffin it said, I, I'm, I know – you know, he, he's 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 been who he was as a coach, but there was a point at which he was like, all right, we need to start running all this crap we're defending. And I think Lane Kiffin was symbolic of them, and then all of a sudden we've seen Heisman Trophy quarterbacks coming out of Alabama, where before they were Ingram, and, you know, there was just this run of, of Henry, uh, of, of running backs. I mean, it, you think you, there were for – Saban's early part, and there were national championships. You think about those games, you think about those teams like running back you. And then later on, most recently, you think about it like, no, it's been like quarterback and wide receiver you. And that's the number one game on Is this it really? list. Yes, the Sugar Bowl 2014 season, right? Alabama loses to Ohio State 42-35. Alabama was ranked number one in the country at the time. Zeke Elliott had a big day. That's right. And, it, and the Buckeyes would go on to win the national mm-hmm. championship. And um, and again, it's the, much like the Texas Tech Texas game from 02, this is primarily viewed of through the prism of how it affected the losing team. Right. Because as you said, right, it kind of began this process of, of introspection, you know, hey, well, how do we need to evolve, et cetera, et cetera. And then they've just gone off like a rocket ship ever since uh, Alabama has. Well, and, and, and it, you know, and I, I'm not – I'm not uh, X's and O's enough to go, oh, you can see the elements of the air raid offense and this and this and this that they run. But what did we all say in the 2000s? You know, and, and a lot of times it was in the context of, oh, no, Leach flew himself to Miami for an interview or what? All, remember all those rumors? And yeah. Stuff? You'd have been a, probably an undergrad oh, yeah, at that point. But, you know, that he was constantly sort of trolling and open for. Oh, that open, was the. That was, it a, was an annual occurrence. Oh six. That was in December. There was several days where it was it was very mm-hmm. very kind of nip and tuck there. It seemed right. And and what was the the narrative all the time was man. I wonder what this offense would look like with a great athlete. You mm-hmm. know, like with blue chip athlete, whatever four and five star athletes. And uh, <clears throat> well, you got to see it. You didn't realize it, but you got to see it with Crabtree. <laughs> now, if there would have been two or three of those guys, but. You know, Bam has been that sort of, I wouldn't say that wide open, but they've been that explosive. Like, Bama has been more than willing to throw it deep six times in the first half, you know, and just blow your ear, blow your brains out. More Tech Talk next. The podcast put together with Red Raider fans in mind. This is the Tech Talk podcast from Double T 97.3. Hi, how are you? Good afternoon. It's Tech Talk on Double T 97.3, Double T 97.3.com. The Double T 97.3 mobile app presented by Happy State Bank with Mike Gustafson and Clint Scott. I'm Aaron Dickens. We'd love to hear your thoughts and comments on the Yates Flooring Center chat line at Double T 97.3.com. You can also access that through the Double T 97.3 mobile app presented by Happy State bank uh so we are discussing this story from the athletic which uh, ranks the 20 most influential college football games since 2000 we've already discussed the one game that involved texas tech the 0-2 win over texas that was number eight we've also discussed the number one game on this list which was ohio state's victory over alabama in the 2014 sugar bowl that uh, really spurred on the um, deep internal look 
into that program, the Crimson Tide, as they kind of more embraced wide open offenses, et cetera. And yeah, awoke the offensive juggernaut that has been. Because how many years of that as that championship game or whatever in that Final Four when really all of the nation is watching, especially at the end of the season, that that you're really starting to get a handle on, hey, there's going to be four first-rounders off of this defense, like Georgia had last year. Yeah. And I heard, a, I heard an NFL GM this, like, in the last two weeks at camp, at an NFL camp, say there will never be an NFL defense with as much talent at one time as that Georgia team had last year. And basically the idea was that it could never be amassed on the same team because – the draft would never allow it because they're all going to go like at the top and all be scattered out through the league and the cap would never allow it. And I thought, man, that's, that's high praise in this era of, you know, high flying, high flying football. Any, do you want to maybe throw some guesses out for other games on this list? One of yeah, the one, well, and I was trying to think of this. I was trying, I'm thinking more situationally here. What was one of the games that led to, the demise of the BCS championship, the single one versus two game, and brought, helped foster the no, we need a four team playoff. But I can't think of what that game would have been. But that's that was definitely in the last twenty years. That's a good question. I don't um, know that there was a single game though, AD. So maybe there may not be any any value to me asking that question that way. Well. um You know, it, yeah, it, I don't think that that game is on here. I mean, I'm thinking of like, uh, wasn't it like an Alabama LSU BCS championship game that that people might have yeah, gotten nine sick to of six or no, oh, no, no. I'm thinking of the the they played the regular season game and LSU won like nine to six, and they came right back and played in the championship though. Yeah, 2012, it was 21 to nothing. It was nine to nothing at halftime. Uh, and the only touchdown of the game was scored with 4.36 left to play in the fourth quarter. F- one field goal in the first quarter, two in the second, two in the third. And yeah, yeah, and monster defense. I mean, and, defense. and I get it. Uh, we as fan, we as a society, <laughs> you know, you know, we 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 want more than that. Because uh, because I thought one of the great dramatic Super Bowls of recent history was the 13 to three game. And and you know y'all we everybody that had a microphone that actually go oh, ah boring game blah 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 I was like man that game had tension to the very end but yeah and, and that that football game right there just sort of dragged on and it felt like LSU is never going to get a first remember LSU had crossed the fifty there was oh, something was about gross. that game yeah there was something about that game like they didn't cross fifty until the second half or something and that was at the end it, it, the game was played in January of 2012 so it was at the end of the 2011 season. Mm-hmm. And less than two years later, you had the playoff kind of announced and formed and planned. Okay. So I don't know if that directly led to it or not. Um, but well, as far as this list goes, I, I'm comfortable with you going from 20 down to one. Okay. Uh, if that fits for you. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, 20 on this list. Number 20, 2001, uh, Nebraska, Colorado. Okay. And this is presented as influential because to them it marked not necessarily the end, but maybe the beginning of the end of uh, Nebraska as the Omega superpower that it had been for Mm -hmm. much of the 90s and the early 2000s because they entered this game with an 11-0 record. Right, so hardly some kind of, you know, power in decline. Right, right, but they got waxed sixty-two to thirty-six. Um, they led twenty-eight to three at the end of the first quarter. Wow, and just got, got the, blew them out. Yeah, got beat fifty-nine to eight. If my math is correct, good grief. And um, okay, you know, Nebraska would go on to get demolished by Miami in the Rose Bowl, Miami would be cl- crowned the national champion. Okay. Um, but that the is... The Rose Bowl? Uh, yes, Rose okay. Bowl. Very good. Wow. Okay. Uh, 2018 LSU-Texas A&M. Was that the 
Wasn't that the big overtime game? Yes, influential because it led to a change in mm. the overtime rules. Uh, there were seven overtimes that lasted 90 minutes. Like, that's one of those games where, you know, you, you, you tune in late. Oh, wow, this is a tight game. You know, there's right. two minutes left in the fourth quarter. I'm going to flip it over to get some kind of exciting result. And then, oh, two overtime. You know, and then by the fourth overtime, it's like, I really want this to end, but I'm already so invested I can't right. flip the channel. That is exactly how I took that game in. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't for whatever reason, but I remember that very thing. Like, just Twitter sort of, oh, my God. Do you remember where you were? I don't. Pretty sure it was my apartment. Podunk, yeah. Kansas. Oh. I was in um, Wichita Falls. I was visiting my in-laws for Thanksgiving, and that game was on. It was I was tired, dude. I wanted to go to bed. Uh, but I had to see it through. <laughs> nice. Uh, 2012, this is number 18 on this list. Uh, Ohio State and Michigan State. And uh, I don't honestly know why uh, this is really on there. The Buckeyes won 17-16. Um. It's on there. Yeah, I don't know. So they no, were, they no were twelve real, and zero. No real narrative given for why it's a why it's a influential. Yeah, I I guess this is this was his first season at Ohio State, Urban Meyer, okay. right? And so um, I guess this was kind of this wasn't a great Ohio State team, even though it went twelve and zero. And so the fact that they went to Michigan State, they won close, but they won was kind of like a listen. If they went twelve and zero against you guys this year, yeah. in his first year at the helm, y'all are hosed. Yep, right. And it turned out that's what happened, right? He he ran roughshod across the entire uh, Big Ten. Think about, uh, think about. Excuse you. Yeah. Pardon me. Yeah. Think about Ohio State's football history. They've never had like a seven loss season. I think that's right. And you go well. Who else has never had a seven-loss season? It's like we can talk about all the traditional power blue blood college football programs that have had seven-loss seasons in the last twenty years: Alabama, Texas. You know, you can go down this USC or mm-hmm. whatever. Ohio State has never had a seven-loss season. Yeah. Never. It's crazy. It, it does say this was also his Myers' first Big Ten game. Oh, it was his first one? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, number 17, see, but still, that to me is a bit more flimsy, Yeah. right? It's, it's like the overtime one, that seems very influential. Yeah. Um, this one seems influential, too. It's it, the Notre Dame-Ohio State Fiesta Bowl at the end of the 2015 season, so this would have been, I guess, played in 2016. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't like a great game. The Buckeyes won 44-28. to 28. Here's why it's influential. Do you, you know who was hurt in that game? Jalen Smith, all everything oh, linebacker, right. almost assuredly a top 15, top 10 pick. And that set it off right there. He got there. dinged up, bad injury. Popped his ACL. And, you know, we, we can likely trace back a lot of these postseason opt-outs to that specific injury. Yeah. He's not the first player to get dinged up in a bowl game. Uh, he won't be the last, but certainly a very, very prominent example. Mm-hmm. And we've seen a rash of these Hey, I'm I'm sitting out this bowl game. I, I don't need any, I don't have to prove anything else. Um, so uh, to me, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, potential first round. A lot of potential first rounders have played in the playoff games and the national championship right. type games. They're stepping away from the other bowl games, like no Kenny doubt. Pickett. Right? I mean, Pitt uh-huh. won the ACC. They went to the Peach Bowl, I think it was, which is a big time bowl game. And still, he said, "Nah, I want to sit out." Mississippi State didn't play their NFL yeah. draft pick tackle last year, and what happened to them? Oh, they got they got drilled. Here's one from just last season. Oh, and I think you'll understand immediately why this is on this list. It's last year's game, Cincinnati's win over Notre Dame. Oh, it elevated Cincinnati into the uh, Big Twelve, most likely. Well, the playoff. I think they were already in the Big Twelve at that point. But oh, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Duh. I'm your. I'm off. Yeah. They uh, it, it they they're the first group of five program yep. to get involved in the playoff and to have an actual chance uh, to win a national championship. 
Yep, and had they not deal. had they not won that game against Notre Dame, it wouldn't have happened. Yeah, it sort of did change the narrative around the group of five deal. Like that was that was yeah, part of the narrative of uh I, I mean for me that's where I have some level of excitement about a twelve or a sixteen team playoff because I can it, it allows us and it allows a Cinderella team into the conference. I mean, into into a playoff, a college football playoff, because the Cinderella deal is really only reserved for football, and in my world, college baseball. Did you view that? I mean, as long as they have a four-team playoff, did you view that as man, that's groundbreaking, opening doors for group of five schools, or do you say like, this is the only time this is happening? Is there a middle ground between the two that I can take? Because I don't, I don't no. know that I've ever watched. A, a college football game and, and gone, man, that's heartwarming, number one. Uh, number two, um, I, I don't. if you keep on playing under this four-team playoff, I think other teams can get in from the group of five, but the, the margin for error is so small. Mm-hmm. Like, you, with a Notre Dame, right, with an Ohio State, with a, a Alabama, with maybe even a Texas Tech, you're they're limited to just that current season. If you're great that current season, mm-hmm. you've got a legit shot. Mm-hmm. If you're a Cincinnati in the group of five, if you are, uh, you know, uh, a Houston in the group of five or San Diego State, you're that window is two, maybe three years. Like if you haven't proven it mm-hmm. in the last season or maybe even the season before that too, we're not going to really consider you. You've been listening to the Tech Talk podcast from Double T ninety seven three. Check out double T973.com for more from Lubbock Sports Station.